Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Lakiro. I work in the Natural and Applied Sciences Department at Evangel University, and I would like to talk to you today about why in the world it takes so long to make a vaccine and what you can do to help scientists during this strange time with the coronavirus. Hey, Dr. Lakiro, could you talk about how vaccines work? Why, yes, I can. Let's go to the slides. In order to understand how vaccines work, we need to understand their purpose. Vaccines kind of act like a wanted poster. When your B cells inside your body need to know what a bad guy is, we use vaccines to show them what they look like. So vaccines can have pieces of coronavirus. They can look like influenza. They can have pieces of rabies, rotavirus, or any number of vaccines, which I'll talk about in a second. When B cells see these wanted posters, they then become able to attack those viruses when they see them in the future. There are four major types of vaccines. Live attenuated vaccines use live virus, but it's been attenuated, so it doesn't work as well. These include the MMR vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine. Killed vaccines use chemicals or heat to actually kill live virus, and just leaving behind the pieces. This includes hepatitis A or rabies viruses. Subunit vaccines use small pieces of the virus that are isolated. This includes the hepatitis B virus or the human papillomavirus. Toxoids use a small piece of another virus or of a toxin to actually attach other pieces of other viruses or bacteria. Uh, it makes them work better. This includes the tetanus vaccine and the diphtheria vaccine. Developing vaccines is an arduous process and takes a long time and a lot of money. The hardest part is actually identifying the antigens that will protect you. But once we identify those, you can initiate preclinical development. With the coronavirus, it looks like the spike protein will be the key antigen here. And so what we can do is try and take pieces of that spike protein and test it in animals. That usually occurs during preclinical development. Assuming that all goes well in the animals, which can include mice, rabbits, and hopefully monkeys, then if that goes really, really well and we get good immune responses, then we can move on to clinical developments. That's usually testing first to see if the vaccine is actually safe and even working at all. That's when we start getting into humans. As we enter our clinical trials, we go from phase one to phase two, phase three, as we increase the number of people that we actually test. In the meantime, we're also trying to figure out, assuming that things work well, how to actually manufacture these vaccines on a large scale, which is an easier process in theory than it actually is in practice. It depends on how you make your vaccine. Live vaccines are really, really hard to grow. That's why we have to use eggs or other living things like cells to grow them. Subunit vaccines are usually a little easier because we can grow those in bacteria and just get the pieces that we need to make the vaccine. Regardless, it takes a long, long time, even if you have the incentive like we do for the coronavirus, to make it really, really quickly. This can take up to two years, bare minimum, to actually go from proof of concept all the way to the end and actually start vaccinating people. So what can you do to help? Fact check everything. You need to double check everything that you see, regardless of your source. There are a lot of really good websites for doing this, like Snopes or PolitiFact, but just make sure that you're not spreading unsubstantiated rumors. It's really easy to do now, and people are very compelling at making statements, but they aren't always based in fact. Use common sense when you go outside. The economy is opening up right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everything's really safe. The virus doesn't care about people's political affiliations or liberties. It wants to infect people. So wear a mask, keep social distancing, and try not to go all kinds of places with lots and lots of people. And with that, thanks for listening. I hope I've given you some facts to take home with you and some things to talk about as you stay safe this summer.